What is up, Packers fans? Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin, just minutes from beautiful Lambeau Field. As we've talked about before, very, very excited. Um, the Packer Report draft party from 5.30 p.m. to the end of the night. Green Bay going to pick at 41, going to pick at 58, going to pick at 88, going to pick at 91. We will be there at Badger State breaking it all down for you. going to be super fun. Before that, though, 4 o'clock to 5.30, do not miss the Pack-A-Day podcast happy hour hosted by Andy Herman. Going to be a phenomenal time. Today on the Daily Draft, we are breaking down what you would think would be um, a prime Packers target at 25 or 41, but I'm going to explain to you why maybe he's not, and that is Georgia cornerback Kamari Lasseter. Um, Lasseter, uh, tough player, smart, technically sound, does everything right. Um, you sound like Mike Gundy there, but a joy to watch play football, um, especially if you – uh, as, as I did, did this year, man, I just switched to kind of covering the cornerbacks for the draft guide. Um, did running backs last year for a thousand years. My specialty was pass rushers and wide receivers. Really getting into like cornerback play. Um, having coordinated defense this, this last year for a high school team. Learning coverages, learning those techniques so that I can teach him. He is so technically sound like Kamari Lasseter um, and, and I know Kirby smart does what he does. And I know Georgia does a great job coaching defense and, and, and that, but just my guy is so consistent. And that was like the, the thing I put in bold, right? So consistent rep in rep out. Um, I just, he's, he's very, very, very fun to watch. Um, Versatile and, and real, re, like true, true versatility. Primarily a perimeter cornerback, uh, played more than 150 snaps on the inside over the course of his final two years in Athens. Um, and I think consistency is, is super important. And the ability to move around is super important. And unfortunately, I think there is a chance that the young man projects inside at the next level. Um, and that's why that versatility is important because I'm not sure the long speed um, is there. In fact, I wonder if we ever got – so, yeah, I, I was looking at his – this is terrible video or radio or whatever, but um, Lassiter ran in the four fives at Georgia's Pro Day and did not run in Indy. So the, the athletic profile that we have for Lassiter is, is interesting in that he ran an otherworldly three-cone drill. And you can see that on film. Short area quickness, change of direction, hips, like unbelievable. Kind of honestly built in a lab to play nickel. If we're looking at a 4.12 second short shuttle with a sub 6.65 three-cone, not super tall, 5'11 and a half, more of a prototype size than a super XL or even XL corner. And here's where the tough part is with the Packers. I think historically, when we're talking about the cornerback spot, they have been pretty darn okay with the, the speed thing as long as it's not disqualifying. Um, but Lassiter's might legitimately be disqualifying. The other part about Lasseter, and we talked about this yesterday with Elijah Jones, is that he weighed in at 186. Now, his 186 is less concerning than Jones's 185, and I know it's not because they're a pound apart. It's because Lasseter is 5'11 and a half. So him being 186 pounds is a shorter corner. There's a density profile there that still makes a little bit of sense especially if you're, if you're moving him inside, treating him as a nickel cornerback, being 5'11 five, five, and 186 is, is not as scary as, my God, this guy's 185 and he's almost 6'2". That's thin, okay? That's thin. I don't see anything when I watch Kamari Lasseter play that would say, like, oh, this guy 
is not physical. This guy is not built. This guy is, I, I'll put it to you this way, as, as it sort of feels like I'm a little bit rambling. I'm not trying to. He is, he doesn't look thin on film. He doesn't look, you know, weak on film. He tackles fine. And ultimately, ultimately, um, I don't have concerns about his frame is, is all I'll say. That's, that's all I'll say. I think he's a sound enough and a tough enough run defender and a tackler that he will have potentially a fit as a high level uh, nickel in the NFL. If that's what a team wants to do. And frankly, and we're going to get to the weaknesses or the cons here. There's a chance that that's what a team is going to want to do because if you kind of adjust like pro day adjust for that 40 time, um, there's legitimate concern that he's just not fast enough to play on the outside and hold up on the outside. Like if you pro day adjust that 40 time up to the four sixes, most teams are not running corners out there that are four points, you know, 4.6 seconds, 40 guys. They're just not going to do it. Um, so he's light. He's a little bit slow. Did not have a ton of ball production. I think that needs to be noted in the cons. Uh, the ball production for a guy that, played as early and as often as he did. And I know he played with a bunch of great players, guys that were good on the ball. Like I get that. There's only so much ball production to go around. I would have liked to see more than 14 pass breakups and one pick in basically three full years as a starter in the Georgia defense. That's not a ton of ball production, especially if I'm going to move you inside to like a playmaker nickel position. I would like to, to see more of that. The one last, the, the, the last con that I'll get, and this might end up being a slightly shorter video. The one last con that I'll get to, he, he, he can panic on downfield stuff, gr- get grabby, get handsy. And look, if you're playing in the SEC at a corner you're, and you don't, you're not six foot, you're not six foot one, we don't know that you have a 40, 41, 42 inch vertical. I'd get panicky if I ran four or six and was playing corner in the SEC too. And I don't mean that to be a jerk. I don't. But if you are a slow corner and you're getting asked to hold up on an island playing in, you know, thirds, playing man. And, and I think, you know, I haven't watched a ton of the Georgia defense. It's, it's saving stuff. So it's probably a lot of two and four. Probably some man stuff, right? Um, with that said, like, it's a scary thing to be that. He's a world-class athlete, obviously, but it's a scary thing to be that slow and be playing corner on the outside in the sec him being grabby him getting a little panicky. Not that's not that surprising to me. Um, I just, I don't think, and there's let's go right into Packers fit. He's a nickel for them or he's nothing. And I think he could be an awesome NFL nickel. I really do. The Packers have gone to Georgia a number of times. Um, they've done, you know, uh, Georgia defensive backs a number of times. It's something that, that they've done, but but he doesn't hit their their speed requirement. He doesn't hit their weight requirement. So they're going to put him inside or they're not going to draft him at all. Overall grade. Um, Kamari Lasseter for me, and, and this will be like, I'm, it's not all about the numbers with me, the testing numbers. It's it's important to note. He's, he's my 50th overall player. A rock solid round two grade. He is cornerback eight for me and somebody that I would at least be interested in if I were the Green Bay Packers. Okay, guys, like I said, shorter video today. Um, Getting real close to to wedding time. Um, Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications, and get all the Packers content that you require on a daily basis here at the Pack-A-Day Podcast. Buy the draft guide. Buy it.